In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can install the Linux operating system onto Microsoft's Azure Cloud Services. Now wait, wait, wait a second before you quickly run into the comments and tell me about all the other hardware options I have or whether I should use Unix or whether I should use a Unix-like operating system such as Minix or Linux or whether I should use OpenBSD, a very secure version of open source Unix. There are many options and that's why it's so important for us to learn Unix and Unix-like operating commands because these types of operating systems are what run embedded systems. A lot of the networking equipment that we have runs on a Unix-based operating system. So learning and teaching these skills is going to be important for both ourselves and our students, as well as the functionality that they provide. And running Linux in Azure makes a lot of sense, not just from a learning and teaching standpoint, because I can allocate the resource play with it for a while and then deallocate it without having to worry about any other types of configuration, have a nice consistent environment for that. But I can also put it into a production workload where, for example, let's say I write a program that's going to have Unix at its, as its core, and then I want to deliver that on a global scale. So in this video, we're going to talk about Linux on Azure. If you're interested in seeing Linux on AWS, Google, or IBM Cloud, let me know. I'm happy to make videos on that as well. Or if you want to see me do uh, OpenBSD on a Raspberry Pi, you can also do that as well. Even if you want to see how we can use our Mac operating system terminal command in order to learn Unix and Linux, we can do that as well. But in this video, like I said, Linux, Azure, let's go. To create any resource in Azure, we first go to azure.com. We'll go to the portal and log in with our account. So I'm going to go in and create a new resource. And if I was to go into something like compute, you'd actually see that there are several different Linux distros that are available here. I could also type in Linux and there is in the marketplace a number of Linux products available to me. Lots of different things that I can do. I'm going to go back to compute and I'm just going to grab a generic Red Hat installation. And so we'll grab, uh, let's grab Red Hat, I think eights here. So we'll grab Red, oh, grab Red Hat Enterprise. So we'll go ahead and create this. I have a lot of different choices here. So what I'll do is I'll go in and create a Linux virtual machine here, 8.4. And it'll just ask me a few questions as I go through. Now it is important to understand that Linux has a lot of different options available for me. So if I'm installing my own version of Linux on some old hardware in my, you know, that I have in my classroom or in my basement or in my office, what I can do is I can make a lot of decisions around whether I want a graphical interface, a lot of uh, packages that I can install at the same time I install Linux. What I'm going to be doing here in Azure is installing a pretty basic version of Linux. And you can see that um, in terms of, you know, I'll use my subscription here. I'm going to create a new resource group and I'll just call it, uh, you know, YouTube Linux demo. I'm just going to do it all lowercase. YouTube Linux demo. So I'll create a resource group where that's going to live. Then I'll go in and give it a name and I'll call it uh, Red Hat Linux. And what I'll do is choose a location. So I'll just put this into central Canada. Notice that down here, uh, I can have different sizes. So I've got this little one that's 542 a month. It's important to note, I'm not going to leave this running 24 hours a day, seven days a week for an entire month. Uh, even 542, that gets, it can get expensive actually. If you, if you go in and grab a larger machine, this is a very, very low powered Linux machine. But again, remember that I'm putting this in Azure just so I can do demos or just so that I can use it for teaching or just so that I could have a student log into it and do simple Linux command line. And it is important also to realize that Linux command line is really probably what I want to begin with my teaching. I, I don't want people getting distracted by the GUI. My preferred machine to run Linux is actually a Raspberry Pi because they're very inexpensive and they have a really nice interface and you can do a lot with them. I have lots of videos on the channel about Raspberry Pis in education. 
but for now I'm just doing it here in Azure. Again, I'm not going to create high availability. This could, of course, be the foundation for something that I wanted to do in terms of a production system that's globally distributed, so on and so forth. Instead of using a SSH public key, I would have to store that and then reference it. I'll use a password. So I'll just put in my name here and then I'll put in my super secret password, which is super secret. No, it's not. But everybody jokes about that. They say, is your super secret password super secret? No, it's not. It's the same password, but I use it just for education. So if I go in here and notice it's going to open up port 22 to IP addresses in a production system, I would not want to do that. So in this case here, what I can also do is I can bring my own license in here but I'm gonna go in and just accept what I've put in here so far, and I'm going to go into my disks. Underneath my disks, I can choose to have SSD um, disks. I can even go down to a standard, you know, non-critical infrequent access. I can go there. It'll lower the price just a little bit. Um, I can choose to have encryption at rest. So this is one of the comments I always get is if you put it in the cloud, they're going to steal your data. That's a little bit of a tinfoil hat uh, paranoia. The, the reality is you can encrypt it and uh, nobody wants your data. And so if we go in here and we'll go into networking and when we take a look at networking, we can go in. I'm, it's going to create a new network in here. I can choose some some uh, subnet defaults in here, public IP, so it's going to be RH Linux IP. I can go in and I can choose things such as uh, NIC security groups in there. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to go to the selected ports in there and allow it in. can do load balancing. So again, I'm not really doing a lot of the back-end management of my Linux distribution. I'm just showing you how to install Linux in Azure as a basic system. So underneath here, you can also see that I'm going to go in. I can choose how I'm going to monitor it. Um, one of the things that I do want to go down here is I'm going to have this automatic shutdown. So you can see here that at 7 p.m. every night, it's going to automatically turn off. And that means it's going to automatically start uh, charge me much less. So if I do accidentally leave it on, this is a $5.75, machine per month. So if I leave it running for a month, it's still not going to be that expensive. And it is important from a, if you're using your own credit card, you really want to be careful at monitoring your costs. But if you're using credits that you might get, so I know that Microsoft gives uh, my students $100 credit during their, their academic lifetime. So that's often more than enough to run a machine for a couple hours, turn it off, even get rid of resources. So I'll go into the advanced here. And underneath the advanced, I can put scripts in there. We're not going to do anything there. Tags, if I'm managing multiple machine, that's a great way to keep track of things. And then I'll just go into my review and create. It's going to give me a summary of what I've chosen here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, OK, yes, I have a port open. It passes the validation. And then I'm going to say create. I'm going to connect to this machine using my... Um, my, my command line. So I'm just going to use SSH to connect to this machine. So I'll be using command line on this particular machine. It's going to be 0 0.0074 a cent per hour. So you can also have more powerful VMs in there as well. And I'm just going to go back to my basics here and make sure if I look at this here that I have put in just the one. Yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't mess up the name and I'm going to review and create it. And it's now going to go in and create this machine for me. If I pop up here, you can see that's initializing the deployment. I can get more information on this deployment as well. Oh, went too far. So I can get more information on the deployment and see what's happening. Once the deployment is done, I can go to the resource. So we'll go to the resource itself. And it's going to give me some information that I'm going to need in order to connect. So it's going to tell me where it's running. It's going to give me information on the network and such. What I really want to look at here is this public IP address, because that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to use that in order to connect to the machine using my secure shell. And you'll notice that right now there's, there's still some things happening in the background. This is more important if I go into my networking and I decide to open up or create firewall rules to allow, let's say, for example, I want to create a firewall rule to allow remote desktop to come in. If I install a graphic interface on here, well, there's a couple of steps to that. I'd have to go in, add an inbound and an outbound rule for a remote desktop. Then I'd have to actually go and enable remote desktop on the machine. 
I really like the idea here is that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a command line version of Linux because that's going to actually make it so that I'm, again, not distracted by a lot of the games that might be on a distribution or some of the graphical interfaces. A lot of times we lean into the graphical interface a little bit too much. And when we first want to learn something like a Unix uh, operating system or Linux operating system, we don't want to lean on a graphic interface. We want to go command line and learn a lot of command line tools first. So I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard and then I'm going to bring up my command prompt and then I'm going to go and I'm going to go uh, secure shell and I'm going to actually go to that specific machine and then it's going to say okay do you really want to go there it's going to yes I do want to go there you could use other SSH hosts as well notice because I didn't use SSH uh, key where I, I didn't have to specify where I was storing a read-only copy of my SSH key that might be a little more advanced if you're just doing this for the first time so I'm using password so this is where I'll put in my super secret password if I can type and talk at the same time and then now I'm connected to my Linux machine and I can do things like my present working directory so I can see what directory I'm currently in you can do things like uh, if I want to go in and make a directory so I'll make a directory called one I'll um, make a directory called two there are ways to create multiple directories at the same time. but And then when I do an ls to list what's here, you can see I've got the two directories in here. So there's a lot of different things I can do. I can change directory to the one directory. So I'm now underneath the one directory. I can again look at what the present working directory is that I'm in. So there's lots of different commands that you can put on there. You can go in and create a file. So if I want to go in here and say something like, I'll just do a touch command, touch... Uh, demo.txt so you can go in there and then when I do a list you can see that I've got demo.txt in there so if I look at my present working directory again I'm in the one directory and I've created a file underneath there called uh, uh, demo.txt uh, you can also go in and if I want to go let's say I want to do a manual page on the touch command you can see this is a full you know distribution of Linux in here so I can get information on that so I can go and use the the manual pages in there as well i can do things like well anything i want to do with linux now it, it may not seem super exciting right now because we're used to graphical interfaces but this is where i begin learning about linux and the nice thing about having it in azure is i am not affecting any changes on a local machine now if i have a dedicated local machine a lot of times like for example in a classroom environment you can just have a raspberry pi and you just use the micro sd cards and all you do is you you'll make a whole bunch of those that have a generic installation of raspberry pi on them every day you come in you put in these fresh little cards you boot up and everything's clean if the students can do whatever they want they can destroy the system for all you care well not the hardware but they can destroy the operating system and then what you can do is just go in there and uh, take a new SD card put it in but here you know if when you're done with it no matter what they do you can just go in and delete the resource when you're done it's fairly inexpensive it's fairly easy to set up as you just saw and I believe it's a useful way to create an environment where students can go in and start playing around and learning some of the um, some of the different things uh, that are involved in in Linux and all the the standard stuff is in there so you can go in and you know if you want to go old school here I can go to my VI terminal this brings back a lot of memories for me because when I first began when I first began with computers it was on a Univac system using Fortran 77 Wacom Fortran 77 so I don't even want to tell you how long ago that was thanks for watching here's a video on working with the Unix subsystem in Windows and let me know about any other videos you might like to see around these skill sets